is going on, everybody? Bobby Fab, the man, Eric Sheets, Haber, talking through week three of the NFL. I'm sorry, week four. Um, boy, it came up on me fast, uh, this this NFL season, but uh, I'm excited about it. It should be a good one. Um, it's been a, it's it, you know, I haven't, I didn't get to play one week, and then I had a, a decent first week, a bad third week, and ready to get back on track here in week four. I always start doing better as the season goes on anyway. So uh, I'm looking forward to this one, and I uh, think it should be a fun slate. So uh, with that said, Sheets, any sort of overall thoughts before we just jump into game game by game here? It's a couple of decent injury uh, bits that 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 can that can uh, drive a couple of decisions. Um, I, I kind of like uh, having done. I did a very quick uh, video yesterday where I went through everything. Kind of helped me kind of prepare for the way you know information flows during the course of a week. And so now I'm going to hopefully get some of your takes. And then we'll, you know, uh, I'm, I, I was not going to be around for the rest of the week, but now I am going to be. So I have more, a couple more days to get poisoned by other, <laughs> by, by other content. But uh, I, I think there, there could be some interesting spots and uh, I'm actually looking forward to this one. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, so let's pull it up and we'll go game by game here and talk about what we're interested in. And uh, I think that, uh, let's see, is it, on, is, it uh, is it the first game on, on, on DK? Let me just double check here because I've got Yeah, a, I got it. It's, uh, I have Cleveland Atlanta. Oh, so it's still a different one. All right, talk about this one, Sheets, and then I'll I'll jump in after you get going here because I'm gonna. Yeah, so so this was a kind of an instinct instinct play I have. Um, it's not really based on much except a couple of things. I I, I think this game could be somewhat sneaky. Um, Cleveland Atlanta. Uh, I think that 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 uh, Amari Cooper can really take on this role of being the number one guy like by a lot in Cleveland, and I think that um. What's his name? Uh, Njoku. He's always had talent. Um, I think this game could be could be could be uh, higher scoring um, because it's uh, you know because Atlanta um, and in Atlanta in a dome and all that stuff. And Cleveland actually moved the ball pretty pretty decently in the first half against Pittsburgh last week. Mm -hmm. um, and on the Atlanta side, I want to just keep playing Cordell Patterson until somebody gives me a reason not to. If you want to know the truth, mm -hmm. um, uh, so I like that. Um, I guess if I really want to do whatever, I'll maybe I'll play like a London or a whatchamacallit or or a Pitts or whatever. But I think you start with something like Patterson and and listen, I think people are going to play Nick Chubb. I, I, well, actually, nobody ever plays Nick Chubb, <laughs> I guess. But yeah, I don't think but, they will. But, but so I I think this is right off the bat is kind of a kind of a neat little game that could be a little sneaky. Yeah, I don't I don't disagree with you. Um, I think that I think you could make an argument for Kareem Hunt also too in this game. Uh, if you play the quarter rail Patterson on one side and maybe they're coming back and the other side, I mean, just, it's a, but you know, two, two poor teams, but it's, it's, you got a big total for these teams. And I like the guys you met. The other guy I would mention is uh, Drake London. I don't know if you, I, I don't know if you said him um, London and Cooper. I, I actually have London a little bit ahead of Cooper, um, but I like the running backs as well. Patterson or Hunt or Chubb. Um, I, I'm actually leaning a little heavier on Chubb this week. But I uh, I don't know if I'm going to end up getting there at that price. That's the only thing that, that's sort of concerning me because I'm going to get into why in just a second. <laughs> um, so let's get to the second game. All right. So far, the gold mine has been basically to play against these play in, in these game environments with these teams. I have no idea what the early ownerships are just saying. I think they're just, they're just crazy. Um, these are very clearly the top two plays in the slate, in my opinion. And I don't think it's particularly close. Um, and I like both of them. And that's that's going to be how I start my week. That's what I'm going to be planning on doing. Uh, I think Lamar might actually even be a better play than Josh Allen because they're letting he's he's doing more running than Josh Allen is. But they're both awesome plays. And the only issue with Lamar as always is who do we who do we play with Lamar? Uh, I think Bateman is definitely in play. I know he had a terrible week last week and they shut him down. Uh, I still am open to it. Bateman or Duvernay. Uh, but overall, I'm just going to be all over this game in general. Diggs's price is up, so it's going to make it hard to get to him. I don't mind Gabe Davis even. So I will be all over this uh, Baltimore and Buffalo game. It's my favorite game of the week by a long shot. And I think because of the pricing, it's a little hard to play. So I am going to be very, very high on this one myself. And I will be well overweight, whatever the over whatever the actual ownership ends up being. I'm not going to be as high enough for the exact reasons that, that you, that you uh, described a little bit in that yeah, I think that that in a vacuum, I think both those quarterbacks are the best plays, right? Um, and th it's a high total, except on the Baltimore side, it's the usual problem that you kind of alluded to of, of what to do with it. You know, like like 
the best receiver I think on the team is the tight end, right? Um, but but Bateman, I guess I guess is where I would go. Um, I just I'm not as as comfortable with with that you know with with the Baltimore stacking options, you know. And not listen, we can get into this discussion as well. Not that you have to necessarily do it that way, um, and, and play a two man stack and, and all this stuff. But I think if you did play like really like game stack this game. I think it's going to be a little lower on than you might think it would be for because people are afraid to do it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. People mm-hmm. are afraid to take a stand and, you know, I'm playing Baton, screw it. I'm playing Duvernay or whoever, you know, um, for what it's worth. I think that, um, I do think that, 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 uh, Dobbins, whatever, I think he's going to get work. Um, the Buffalo side, I think is a little cl- more clear with respect to, you know, like I, I think that Diggs is, you know, uh, clearly for me, the best play, I don't think it's that hard to get them at 8,400. So uh, that's where I would start if I was playing the Buffalo side mm-hmm. and then same thing. I mean, then you're, then you're into the secondary receivers and you're into the Dawson Knoxes and, and all this stuff. So for me, it's a you know, big total game. I don't know exactly how to play, but if you could figure it out, I think it's going to be lower owned than, than you think. And it's going to be one of those games where mm-hmm. it's 38, 27 to win somebody in the slate. And you're like, why the hell didn't we just play freaking everything on Buffalo and Baltimore? And it seems as though you're already on top of that. Yeah. Um, so so yeah so uh that's uh that's it's 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 a tough game for 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 ocd stack correlation guys like me to play but it's probably the right thing to do <laughs> yeah i'll just point out that baltimore's already won the million twice yeah with a, right. with, with, with a skinny stack with no run back or what was our one time with no run back one time with a double run back um and i think this is a really good spot to try to take advantage of baltimore secondary hasn't been what we thought what people thought it was going to be or not even close actually and um I like all pieces in this game. Uh, priorities, though, would be Diggs, Andrews, both quarterbacks. Um, and I don't mind Duvernay, by the way. He's scored a touchdown in every game this season, mm-hmm. and he's 4,100. And you're going to want some value at certain points. And to get some value inside the game that you want to stack makes a lot of sense to me. Um, especially as a run back. If you're going to try and run back something against the Bills, like maybe you could play Duvernay because there's always a chance he runs back a punt again. You know, he's a he's a pretty good returner, so. All right, um, Dallas and Washington. Uh, there's a time in play that when this when this would have been a very exciting game to to play for DFS purposes. And as of right now, the only thing I'm coming up with is Curtis Samuel and potentially C.D. Lamb. How about you? Yeah. So, so for me, uh, I watched that Dallas Giants game, uh, and and the Giants Dallas won by seven. The reality is Dallas is like 28 points better. Like like they <laughs> dominated that line of scrimmage. Like I, I mean like. Daniel Jones is really good. Daniel Jones, as much as he's gotten pressure over the years, I don't know if anybody saw the stat. Daniel Jones had an all time career high in pressures against him in that game. Dallas in all of Daniel Jones's history has never faced the type of pressure he felt as he did in the Dallas game. And, 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 and Dallas just owned them. The only reason that, that the Giants were even close, because actually the Giants are coaching. They coach actually a decent game, right? They don't know how you don't put the right personnel on whatever, but they actually coach some good plays and Dallas is hopeless as far as that goes. But as far as like physicality and stuff like Dallas, like 80 points better than they were. Um, so for me, like the real play in this game is probably the Dallas defense against Carson Wentz. Yep. Um, that would be, that would be my play. I'm not, I'm not messing with that power and Zeke situation. Um, except that everybody, everybody in the universe knows the power to the better running back, <laughs> but, mm-hmm. but uh, so I'm not messing with that. Um, I don't know if the slate's, big enough or small enough for me to play CD lamb, but I certainly get that. Um, to me, it's like, I, I, I see this, I see the same kind of results as the Giants. Here. I see Wentz getting sacked 80 times and maybe throwing a pick six in this game. Yeah. Is this, is, is there going to be one time when we ever see the, the Terry McLaurin get targeted? Like, I mean, Curtis Samuels had is, is averaging 10 targets a game right now. And I think that yeah. he's got to be, he, so I actually think he's a little bit of a, of a priority. I expect him to be throwing a lot from behind, but yeah. w- way more on DraftKings than on, on FanDuel because you don't want to play the, the he's, he's, he's going to get there by route of multiple of, of his, of his catches of his targets. Um, not so much by having a great chance to score. Cause I don't really like this game for that, but I do like Curtis Samuel in this game. And that's pretty much all I'm going to do outside of the, again, like you mentioned, the Dallas defense is a little bit expensive. I don't mind going there. And I also don't mind going to the Washington defense either, even though uh, Cooper rush, uh, we, we, all he does is make, is, is look good. Like, and, uh, and we, we end up we trying to pick on him every, every time. So let me, let me, let me yeah. deal with the Seattle game. Um, so I've been, I've been looking at this game. 
I've been looking at this game a lot. All right. So this is a this is a really, really key point for the slate. Okay. If, if I, I don't know if it's been talked about enough, but whatever it is. But it, it, St. Brown is legit questionable for this game. Um, and from what I hear, he's actually trending towards taking the week off. Um, if that in if that in fact occurs, um, you're gonna get uh DJ Shark at a flat 5k, um, which is going to just blow up, I think. Um, as far as the projections go, it's whatever. And then you, if Josh Reynolds actually gets a chance to, you know, he's questionable too, but he's trending more towards playing. And you get both these two guys at 5K and 4,600 in, in, in the dome, in this type of environment. Um, th- those two are going to be like at least sharp. I think it would be a massive bit of chalk. I mean, I, I, that's, what I would, that's what I would think. Now, that's if St. Brown is out. Um, if St. Brown is in, it, it certainly doesn't change the fact that or it improves the fact that Detroit's going to rate to rate to put some points up on the board. Um, similarly, in this Detroit game, you have DeAndre Swift, and I think he's trending more towards out. Um, nothing but coach speak about how they he could use a couple of weeks off and whatever. So I think he's trending towards out. Jamal Williams was perfectly fine. In the, I mean, he's. He's always been good. He got, he got all the work in, uh, after Swift, I guess, either went down or whatever happened to him. 20, 20, 20 rushes or whatever it is. And he's going to be the main guy. And he's only 6,100. Um, so I think that he has to be in play. So for me, uh, there's two two kind of injuries that you have to keep a lookout on the slate. Um, if, if you want to game stack this somehow, if you want to try to stack the Detroit somehow and run back something with Seattle, it would have to be one of the two wide receivers. Um, but I, I I think that's a I think this game is pretty important, especially with that St. Brown news. Yeah, it's I mean, right now Geno Smith is the highest projected quarterback ownership of the slate, which is just something we should wow. point out. Wow. It, is, it has been a good matchup against Detroit. Uh, J- Jamal Williams. This is a really chalky game, actually. Yeah, I mean, just Jamal Williams and and uh, Geno, and then you're gonna have to imagine. I'm just taking a quick look at the receivers. It would be uh, Shark for Detroit. <laughs> Well, I think Lockett's going to be the natural first one, everybody. Of course, Seattle. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I think Lockett or Metcalf are fine. Um, and I, I think that Jamal Williams is a reasonable play. And I, I have Gino on my list. And I have, because of the game environments that they've been playing in, I, I even have Jared Goff on my list. Depending if I don't want to do it, though, if St. Brown is out. I don't. And again, like you said, DJ, it might be Shark. Um And even, even by the way, like we maybe should consider Jamal Williams, even if DeAndre Swift plays. He's just getting all the work right now because Swift is clearly banged up, but I think that they will, they will end up sitting sharp, uh, Swift this week. Like you, like you mentioned. Um, another, another guy that should not go. I mean, this should be obvious is, is especially if what's his name is out is TJ Hawkinson um, at tight end. Oh, very um, fair. Yeah. Yeah. And, and if you want to, if you want to win the million, you gotta, you gotta do a little bit of, of, of digging, see if he's gotten snaps in the preseason. But again, if St. Brown is out, this guy did really well for me last, last year, this Khalif Raymond. Um, and I, I just imagine that he'd be the next guy in um, just based on what I know from the team. Uh, I, I, it's funny. I, I didn't quite see it the way people are seeing. It. I, I don't, I didn't see Seattle as live to put up points as other people are. I, I think Detroit is better. Um, than they've just been do. getting torched every week defensively though. Well, but they've been, they've been playing. I mean, they played Philadelphia. Yeah. They played with it. I mean, like, uh, in Minnesota, they were they were doing well, and they were they, yeah, their defense actually played well f- for the most part, and then just completely fell apart at the end. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think Seattle's kind of kind of dead, but we'll 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 see. Yeah, uh, I I I would if I were playing cat, I I wouldn't I wouldn't play Geno Smith in this spot. I, I don't know. That that's me. So uh, if that's the case, uh, some someone else can. So I think someone else can do that. Yeah, fair enough. Um, I do like the idea of spending down in quarterback in general. As you know, that's the only problem is we have two guys who can put up 45, 40 some odd points and these 5,400 guys are just in the same game. <laughs> you know? Um, all right, Chargers and uh, Chargers in Houston. Uh, this is, you know, a game with question marks as usual with the Chargers. Who's going to play? Who's healthy? Who's not? Uh, Keenan Allen is a guy who I'd be very happy to go to in this game, if assuming that he does play. He should be fine. Um, I mean, yeah, he hasn't played though. No, but but the, 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 same for what the coaches have been saying. I mean, like they say he's going to yeah. still be practicing this week, so we'll be able to tell. I mean, like yeah, know. and he might, but he also is getting older. Like, and and I, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm a little worried about that. And the thing is, this sh- if there was a week to play Eckler, I think this is the week to do it. Um, 
it's it's been a struggle and, and they, they, he even said before the season he said literally to my fantasy owners just know that i'm not going to get the same kind of work that i that you're used to seeing me get which was actually already sort of happening last year he just was so explosive in his little bit of time um but i i i like brandon cooks i like uh uh the running back i like damian pierce and then i like eckler a little bit that's what that's my, my favorites are right now yeah um I didn't quite get to this game except for the uh, for the running back for Houston um, Pierce. Yeah, it's not the type of guy I really want to play though. I mean, like they're probably going to be. I don't know. Just, it doesn't feel like a ceiling type game, but he's well, young. Fine. He's going to be the second most popular running back probably. Oh so. really? So I mean, so, as of right now, behind Jamal Williams, that's what he's projected, and I think he's yeah, going to end up somewhere around there. Yeah. So I, I again, I, I think someone else can try that. We'll see. Yeah. The Chargers, you know, as usual, lots of names on defense, lots of, oh, this guy's this and this guy's this and lots of lack of production from that from that same defense. So, um, yeah, Eckler and Pierce are both going to be priorities for me. And then I do like Cooks as well. Uh, just I, I just don't trust San Diego at this moment. And and honestly, I think that your your boy who you, who you always mention, he, I just I always am focused on the Charger games because they uh, because they go off and. The weird, uh, my get weird guys may end up being Nico Collins. Um, so that's what I've got for this game. All right, Tennessee and Indy sheets. What do you got here? Well, let's start with Alec Pierce. Uh, let's take a look <laughs> at him. Really? Thirty, he's thirty nine hundred. Um, he was he was a prospect. In first the first week, he he had to leave with concussion protocols, and then in the second week, he didn't really play. He came out, he came in this last game and he was basically got two targets in one of the first two possessions. He had five targets for 60, six, three receptions, 61 yards and a 30 yard play for nine fantasy points. Uh, let's put that up. Anyway, um, Michael Pittman, 7,200 is probably too expensive. Uh, Jonathan Taylor at 8,800. I still think for whatever reason he's in play, but I, he's kind of have to show something. He's got, I thought he was going to do better in the last game against Kansas City if he went over to um, yeah. they, they beat Kansas City and he still didn't do it. So he got he got kind of scarfed at the goal line one time, but that, I can't be like begging for him to get in, you know, the goal line for for, for at his price, you know, like sure. he's like, you know, he, he's got to be able to do it without getting running like running like God in front of the goal. Um, as far as Tennessee, um, I think Indianapolis's defense is too good for me to um, uh, play Derrick Henry, I think. Um, although you know, obviously it was really good last week, especially in the first half. I think this this game is probably sure their defense is good. That wasn't just a no, game. I'm not, I'm not. Um, but I know it was good last year. Um, and uh maybe I, I so listen, I do think Henry at 8,300 he always has he always has a ceiling. Um, and again, if these other these other guys like like uh over the 60 the Jamal Williams and 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 Pierce and these 5600 guys are this is what I did last week if these guys are going to dominate the, the board so that people could pay it for receivers I I just kind of inclined to maybe try Henry again like the same type of same type of idea so we'll see mm -hmm. uh yeah I, I I do like Pittman I don't think 7200 is too expensive oh, okay. um and that's really, to be honest with you, my highest level of interest. I will consider Jonathan Taylor and Derrick Henry as I always do, but I don't know if I'm going to come up with anything more than what I have right now. Um, I, I, at some point, I expect Robert Woods to to put up some actual numbers. I mean, he's they've they've definitely tried to get him more involved, um, but I think that I'll probably end up skipping it this week. Uh, I'm not not very excited about this game. I don't like playing indie games; they're always the worst for DFS because, I mean, occasionally you get the Jonathan Taylor big games and all that stuff, but it's it's not even that their defense is good. They just they play less. They they play slow. They play as slow as you possibly can play. So they're going to play less snaps. So they're going to play in lower scoring games, and it's just going to be less exciting for fantasy. So I will personally not be very high on that one. All right, Chicago and New York, New York Giants. Uh, <laughs> well, as as I as I mentioned, the Giants are soft, and you might get Montgomery out and Khalil Herbert who basically went 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 off last week um at 5700 pretty sure that's what they're, they're gonna study film i'm pretty sure that's what they're gonna try again against the giants i don't they want to put it in necessarily in justin field's hands um and is is herb if, if montgomery is out is herbert any less 
chalky or a play than these other guys? Herbert's going to be really popular. Right. That's what I'm saying. If, okay. if he's out, yeah. Okay. okay. Um, and then on the other side, I mean, you had Barkley, who was, who was allegedly in a really good spot against Dallas. But you know what? Dallas's defense was no joke, you know? And, and uh, I think that, I don't know, I, I, I would give him another shot here. Um, I think Chicago's defense is a little more, more again, a little more reputation in reality. Um, uh, they did have the good game against San Francisco, but that was in the, I was in the quagmire. They were on their hands and knees to be Houston last week. If you want to know the truth. Um, in the green Bay game, they actually played. Okay. So I don't know. I think Barkley's again, if I think it's the same thing, like if you go back to Barkley after he burned everybody as chalk in the face of all these great 5,600 plays, you can pair him with like a Derrick Henry or something like that. Um, I do think that Daniel Jones, again, like he got freaking beat up in this, yep. in this game. He was getting run all over the place. And and yet I think we have another wide receiver down. Now Sterling Shepard is down for the Giants. They've got just nothing. So there's two things you could do. You could attempt to get the rest of this Giants receiving core right. And I guess you know what it is? I guess it's the Richie James Davis Sill show because <laughs> Kenny Galladay – is is just gone. I mean, he was out I don't of know. field. He did play the other night, though. He played, but that's like a bit even worse, you know. Yeah. Um, and 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 here we go again. We get Darius Tony. Just they have just no interest. I don't know why Darius Slate never plays anymore, but he's he's he's. I don't know what they're going to do with him. I, I do think that in, in the Millie Maker, one of these one of these idiots like catches some touchdown or something. Um, <laughs> like like Dave, like Sills the fifth. Is, is it possible that Sills is chalk at 3K? Mm, I think he'll get like a look or two, but I don't know about the chalk. Like, there's no Shepard. There's nobody. It, well, no, that's the thing. Is that there's like They have like five other guys who are the same sort of rating. You know what I mean? And well, he, I don't know. Possible. I mean, like I think Richie James and D. Sills the fifth are like the two guys that the only guys that I think are going to be on the field. I mean, Galladay. I think if Tony's healthy, home. they'll play Tony. He's, but he's not. I'm telling you, he's done. And they've been playing Galladay, whether whatever whatever it is that he played look, a lot. Look of at this line it. score: three what? targets, zero fantasy points. Who? Yeah. Oh, no, no, I'm not saying play Galladay. I'm just saying that he's on the well, field. Well, hold on a minute. But why, why not play Galladay? You know what I mean? Like, I'm actually open to that idea if we hear some other speak by the end of the week or something. It doesn't. I mean, they might right go now. to Galladay and say, "Listen, dude, I'll tell you what I'll do. I mean, just just get get on the field for set eight for all the snaps, and then we'll trade you next week." You know what I mean? Like, you really want to be traded. They literally have nobody. But, but the point I was making, though, is with the complete lack of any kind of receiving core and the fact that, that that what's his name, that that Jones got chased all over the freaking place. Listen, props to him. He got like 80 yards rushing. Not by design. You saw how he got it, right, though? You saw what happened. He, had the, he was running for a wide open touchdown. There was nobody within 50 yards of him, and he tripped, and he oh, fell down. That was like this year, too? Line. He was about to run for like a 75-yard touchdown. I didn't even see that one. I remember he did that last year too. He tripped on his like own his own feet. It was really ridiculous. It was right before the half too. Yeah. So so, but he was running for his life. You know what I mean? And and yeah, I think yeah. that 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 they are. That I think the Giants are going to do their best, if possible, to just freaking get get Barkley going. You know what I mean? That, that's 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 my opinion on this game. So so I I I will, I will go back to Barkley after he burned people. That that's I guess that's my that's my. Uh, that's my burn, overall I mean, take. It was a it was a Monday night game. He put up twenty two fantasy points. I don't really know what what people would expect from him. He was the highest scoring player on the slate, right? Oh, oh like, he did, he did break out eventually. Right? He, he was a little behind CD, I think. I guess. Um, yeah, I, I'm okay. I'm open to Barkley. Uh, I will be all over Herbert if if Montgomery is out. If Montgomery uh, is in, I will be into Montgomery um, as well. I mean, instead. And I am right with you on this, 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 I'm probably going to use one of these giants receivers for value, which is going to feel really gross. And I don't know which one it's going to be yet. As of right now, it would be Richie James. And I don't even know if that's a good idea. Um, I feel very, very up in the air with what to do with this giants receiving core. Uh, it does feel like they have like four guys and two of them, like you said, they don't really seem to want to do anything or nothing's happening with them. It, Galladay may end up being a play by the end of the week. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's crazy to say um all right is do you have what do you have next the uh the, and the other the other fun one this is my other my second favorite game on the slate uh jacksonville at philly i like that jacksonville will keep the ball in the air when they have to and they'll they'll, they'll try to pound at times but they they they've you know they've they've looked really good offensively a lot of respect for philly here um with the spread and i i like this game environment i, I think hurts is the obviously the the priority guy you want but 
Trevor Lawrence at 5,700, there's a guy I could spend down on and get, get, get a part of a game stack and really be going somewhere. And I, I really, I really do think that it's very viable. I, I think this miles, we, 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 do we have to stop right with the miles Sanders? Like I know he's going to have some games, but it's, it, I'm, I'm, it's really frustrating to watch if they're within the five or the 10 yard line. It's, it's, it's either Gainwell or Scott. If it's where the five, it's always Scott or Hertz. Like he just, I mean, he went what 15 games before scoring a touchdown last year. He scored one in the first game this year. It's just so hard for him to get there with the way that they run their offense. And the weird part is they're going nuts offensively every game and he's doing nothing. So I also think James Robinson may have actually won his job back. <laughs> like um, he's been really good. Uh, but I, you know, it's harder for me to, to find the exact pieces I know I want, but I do want to, I, I do want exposure to this game. I think Goddard is reasonable at tight end. Uh, I think the receivers uh, are going to be low owned and all of them are in play. Devonte Smith, AJ Brown, Chris Kirk, J- Zay Jones as a spend down, Marvin Jones as a spend down. I think everybody in this game is interesting. So I'm going to be very high on this as a game stack. Um, I think you double stack it if you do it with uh, with Lawrence, uh, Lawrence and Kirk, Lawrence, Kirk and Jones. And I think if you play Hertz, you could either do it with two receivers or you could do it with one or you could do it with just the tight end. I think all of them are completely on the board. I really like this game a lot. Um, and I think it's going to end up like like we talked about because of the pricing in some of the situations, it's I think it's going to actually get overlooked and be a little under owned because um, there aren't the obvious, obvious who to play guys. And uh, I think Chris Kirk is one of those guys that isn't being treated like that. So I think he's probably my favorite play in the game, but I like everybody here. Yeah. It's a good, I think it's uh, I, I think the only way this game doesn't go over um, is if it's, if, 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 if I'm just not wrong, but if, if, if I just underestimate, I overestimate how good Jacksonville is and underestimate Philadelphia. I think Philadelphia could, could blast in this game. I think more likely it's just kind of a high scoring semi-competitive game that just goes over. You know what I mean? Um, that's, that's my opinion on the game. So you probably do want to get some pieces. What is the old total 50? Uh, yeah, I think it's 49. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a tough number, but I think, I think, I think they, I think they get there. The only thing yeah, I would I say is that Jacksonville's great. defense, Jacksonville's defense has been pretty good. Um, they're, they're, they've been good, but I mean, nobody has shown any ability at all to stop the Eagles. And for yeah. what it's worth, it's, it looks like it's going to be a, a rainy game, although I don't see any wind stuff. No, I don't think so. I see, I see that there too, but I, you know, I've looked at the weather around here at least and in New York, which is like right near Philly. I mean, I yeah. don't see any problems. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see closer to, to game time, but yeah, definitely a game that I'm going to be, I'm going to be a part of. Um, I, I really enjoy watching these Eagles play, by the way. I'm really impressed by Hertz so far this season. I, I mean, he's just looked incredible. Um, pretty amazing that he's like the guy who everybody was betting to lose his job or people were making that comment all over the place. And, oh, he's the one thing that's going to hold him back. And now he's second favorite for MVP. Um, all right. We're going to talk about your, uh, well, I don't, it's not necessarily, not your Jets. Jets in Pittsburgh here um, feel like, feels like a big cross off game for me. What are you, what are you finding? Um, I think that, um, like it or not, I think that Zach Wilson's in play. Okay. Um, I mean, he's coming back. I mean, he's medic- being medically cleared to play. Um, he's, he's super cheap. He's got some talent. He's got, got a couple of guys to throw to. I mean, he's got, um, he's got the, uh, the, 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 the new guy. Now I forget his name. Um, uh, uh What's his name? Uh, Wilson. Yeah, Garrett. Yeah, this guy looks good. He looks good. Um, you got Michael Carter maybe coming out of the backfield. You could play Elijah Moore or whatever it is. And uh, I just think I just think he's cheap. You know what I mean? Like I think the game is a, is 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 kind of a crappy game. But you know what? It's like the Jets put up thirty against the Browns somehow. Pittsburgh and Cleveland they they were moving the ball up and down the field for the first half at least in in a win game. Um, I don't know. I, I just, I just, I just, I just have this this sick feeling that 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 uh, Zach Wilson is in play. That's the best I can describe it in the Millie Maker, and I'll probably I'll play a couple of shares. Um, th- that would be pretty pretty disgusting if this game actually won somebody something. But I uh, I don't know. I just got I just got a weird. Well, I'll tell you what. I love I love the runbacks um, more than yes. I like the play itself. I, I don't know any reason why we should be picking on the Steelers. Um, I have other cheap quarterbacks that I like better than Zach Wilson. Yeah. I think he's going to have some games, but I'm certainly not going to take it in Pittsburgh and, and, and the first one. So I, I can't do the game stack, but I, I, I do. I, I should have cleared up. I, I'm okay with Garrett Wilson. I think that he's reasonable at his price. And I really like Deontay Johnson and Najee Harris. I should have mentioned that stuff. Um, I think that people are overlooking. Like, I, I, Can we free De- De- Deontay Johnson and give him a real quarterback? 
This guy is such a good receiver. Well, that's another thing that you want to keep an eye on. Um, it's it's very possible. I mean, look at they, – they, well, they've been waiting for this all season. Eventually, Pickett's going to take over for Pittsburgh. Yeah. Um, they don't know exactly when. And, and one, one, one theory was – Let's let's get him started, you know, against in a, in a game that he can win. The only problem is that after that, it's literally like the four best teams in football they have to play. So right. so they're probably going to wait, make make Trubisky suffer through all those four losses, and then have the bye, and then have Pickett come off the bye. That's yeah. my opinion. Uh, what's gonna What's gonna happen? Um, yeah, I'm into what you're saying about. By the way, about Wilson overall, I actually think he's gonna have some big games this year, especially with that speed he's got. Um, with, with the speed with guilt with Wilson, um, especially, but I don't think this is the spot to do it, but I, I, I like the thinking though. I think you're, I think you're, I think you're good at, you're good at getting ahead of the curve on, on Zach Wilson is probably going to win somebody a million dollars sometime this year. Um, all right, Arizona and Carolina in a game that I don't think anybody would have thought that would have had this low of a total early on. Cause Arizona usually in this month yeah, has, right. has points on their own. Um, I'll tell you what. Zero percent Kyler is something we have to consider, at least. Who in the hell to play with him is really confusing, especially if Rondell Moore is out. If Rondell Moore is in, um, I'm into Rondell Moore at 3,800. And I guess you could, I mean, Marquise Brown had a monster game last week. Um, I, I guess Kyler with a run back of the the obvious Christian McCaffrey, and then you 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 do Kyler to, uh, to Rondell Moore on a skinny stack or something like that. I could get behind that. But... Uh, Overall, not not it's not going to be a priority for me anything in this game. Just just like the Kyler ownership at at zero <laughs> percent. I think Rondell Moore is a great play. I didn't even think about that. I didn't even realize that he was going to be back this week. I just I just as you were saying, I pulled him up and, and saw that he was uh, they expect him to be back. Yeah, I mean he he was legitimately going to be forty percent owned week one yeah. or whatever it was, and now he's like not in, but he's he's like back now, and, and that's um. No, he's gonna, he's, nobody's going to play him. You know what I mean? Yeah. If, if anything, people are all into the door, which makes sense, right? And Marquise Brown, and 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 um, and in fairness, I mean Carolina, you know, it's not the team you usually like to go after, um, which means they're going to be really, really low owned. And, and you know, again, Millie Maker plays are not, you know, are not cash plays. So uh, I like it. Um, Carolina again. I just, I just, I think we're. I say different. You got you got to talk me down from this because I, I just don't really feel like giving up on on McCaffrey yet. I know you're like, dude, what are you doing? I mean, like, no, 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 no. I'm not. I'm not into giving up on him. I'm just saying that I think he's a little bit over overrated. Um, I do think this is the kind of matchup where you should be probably looking at him really long. I mean, this is Arizona team hasn't shown the ability to stop the running game. I think this is a good spot for him to break out. Um, I mean, he's got 100 yards two games in a row. It's not like he's been bad. <laughs> no, no, but I mean, you're, you got to, you got the, for, he has to do so much damage to pay off that salary. Right. You're, you need multi touchdowns and you need like 10 catches, like the old, like the old version. Right. 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 Um, but, and then you've got, you've got, for, can we get another free, free them, free DJ Moore from this horribleness having to play with Baker? Um, right. This guy's a really awesome receiver. He's 5,300, and it's hard for me not to have him as a, a really, both like both Moors in this game are probably my favorite plays. And I just can't stand like taking a receiver that Baker's throwing to, but 5,300 for a receiver that could easily be seven K is something a little bit interesting. Good luck. Uh, good luck, New England in this next game. Um, yeah. Good luck. New England is right. Um, good, luck. good luck to you, sir. Uh, uh, but at the, at the same time, are we not sure that, that uh, it, I'm not saying it's an upgrade, but. The Brian Hart is not that much worse go, than Matt Jones, right? Well, I just think Mac Jones is is you know he's just limited. It, it, when when Cam plays, which I think he will play soon enough, um, you know he's he at least lets you do some other things. I mean, uh, there's a lot of quarterbacks playing that are a lot worse than Cam right now, in my opinion. And guys like Baker, and for for one, <laughs> um, this is like I, I I don't even like I guess it's it's is is it finally you know. AJ Dillon or Aaron Jones week. Maybe it's AJ Dillon week. I don't know. I, I I just hate this situation with the split backs for, for fantasy, even though I totally understand it for, for logical reasons. And they're going to try and give all the work they can uh, New England to these two running backs. They're going to try to try to keep the ball. In the, that's what I think they're going to try and keep the ball on the ground. I just can't get to anything here, man. I, I'm really having a hard time finding anything at all. The rebirth of Devonte Parker last week was something that was kind of fun, but I yeah. don't think I want to do that. Yeah. Um, I think the best play maybe Dobbs here. 
Um, and, and it wouldn't surprise me if one of the, the Green Bay's running backs had a, he had a huge game. But I think it's probably just Dobbs for me. Yeah. And listen, game. here's the reality. The reality is when you have a team like New England that it just, you know, this just owned the world for like 15 years, right? Like yeah. all these Super Bowls and all this stuff and like everybody – all of the opponents like hate Belichick. You know what I mean? They just they've been waiting for a chance to like to like <laughs> to, to to catch like a weak Belichick team, whatever. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't think it's I don't think it's even as simple as as just feeding it to Jones. I I, I think that Aaron Rodgers wants like four touchdowns. You know what I mean? Like okay. I, I, I okay. think that. Um, so I, I don't know. I buy, I, I buy that narrative hundred percent. By the way, I totally yeah. Agree. Uh, I I I'm, I'm really interested in that. Uh, but that, that'd be kind of fun. Like how how. How, how about a zero percent on Aaron Jones? <laughs> that be... that's, the, that's the thing that I keep coming back to is that I, I could see Aaron Jones. This could be like the, the, the one of those forty. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean Aaron Jones. Oh, I mean Aaron Rodgers. I meant Aaron Rodgers. But Aaron Jones is going to be unknown too, right? And and I mean the guy. He, it depends on the week. It might be AJ Dillon one week. It might be him another week. But he does have a 35 fantasy point game already this season. It's a, a matchup we're expecting them to play from ahead. I think I'm going to put Aaron Jones as my Jones or Dylan in some lineups. And I think I'm going to, I think I like that actually a little bit, the Jones idea. Okay. And I like your Rogers idea too. I think that you play Rogers with Dobbs and Lazard and at no ownership. Um, yeah. I think that's something you could do. I, I especially, but the, as an individual play, I do think Dobbs is the one guy who stands out as being somewhat interesting to me here. Oh, this is going to be a, a, an interesting one. At some point, I don't expect Denver to always be this bad. It's pretty, I mean, offensively, uh, I don't think I'm going to play anything here on the uh, as a as a priority for uh, for the I mean certainly the quarterback's not a priority. I do think Cortland Sutton, Devonte Adams, Jerry Judy are all in play, and Matt Collins even at 4200 is probably in play if Renfro is out. If Renfro is in, I will lose that interest in him, um, and I will actually have some interest in Renfro. But honestly, it's really weird to say that Josh Jacobs as a spend down it might be my favorite play overall in this game, and that's not saying anything great. Um, this is my favorite game overall. Whoa! Um, in the million, there it years. is. Yeah, I do. I, have I, I, seen, uh, either of these teams scored twenty points yet in the game? No, they haven't. Um, <laughs> I think they might have. No, they but, might have once. Let's see. But 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 I, I get I get to play I get to play Devontae Adams. I get to play um, Darren Waller. I'll I'll even play Hollins if he plays. I'll get to play. I think Judy and, and Sutton are just really really talented, and. Uh, I don't really think Vegas's defense is anything to write home about, and um, yeah. and and I uh, I don't know. Looks like a close close game, ignored game. Um, I know where, I know where my targets are going to be, and, uh, and 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 just to give you guys a little shout out, you know. So I I put these I've been putting these stacks up on the site for like four weeks, and I just realized last week that they weren't actually showing up anywhere. Oh shit. <laughs> I reached out to Evan. I'm like, dude, where, why are they the, the stacks? And we never even set it up to receive them. Like we set up the site to receive the baseball stacks. But when we did that, remember when Mark was there, we set everything up and I'm like, Oh, well, we'll deal with football later. And I just forgot. So oh, I shoot, okay. So I'm putting up these football sites every week and, and they just haven't gone anywhere on the site. You know what I mean? They're sitting right. in freaking in the ether. So when, when I, when I put my stacks together and, and whatever, I kind of rate them. And then I just kind of have like kind of like this leverage score wherever. And I, I certainly don't have Vegas as the best stack, right? I have for openers, Buffalo, like m much higher. I have Detroit, assuming St. Brown's at higher. I have Philly higher, whatever it is. But given the ownership, um, <clears throat> I'm in. Uh, I think they're close enough where I, I would I would take a shot. Um, and that's how I got to the Seattle Atlanta too. So um, I, 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 I'm, I'm in there. Uh, I don't think any game here – is 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 like such easy chalk that's going that I'm afraid of, you know. Um, like the like, let's talk about the slate, right? So I think the, the highest scoring game, the most exciting game, I think is clearly Buffalo Baltimore. I'm not exactly sure how to play it, you know. I think Detroit Seattle rates to be pretty fast, whatever. But if, they have, if St. Brown is out, I, I don't know where that's coming from. But that, I think that 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 could that could be pretty good. And I just yeah. looking through this board here, it's like every game just kind of. It's kind of sucks, you know, with the exception of the, like, like a couple of them. So if you play any of these other teams, like if one game busts, you're like kind of in business, you know? So yeah. I don't know. That's, 
That's why I'm going to do stupid, stupid shit like Cleveland. I, I, I mean, I, I totally get the logic behind it because I only have two games as priorities, and I and I feels good actually. I Baltimore, Buffalo, Jacksonville, Philly. Uh, I agree with those two. I think those two are clearly the best teams. Yeah, you no, know? and but the great thing is that they're not. You're not getting them at much ownership, so I probably right. am going to try to find ways to squeeze it in. Yep. But I, but the other approach I would take is we'll skip those games and then just find another weird one to get funny with but 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 do you remember even the first three weeks especially the first two but even whatever there were like four games that like were just freaking awesome looking you know they all like 53 totals in the dome with Mahomes, god knows who else with rams versus arizona yeah. blah, blah, blah. and everybody's focused on these four games that fade these four at your own risk here it's like i don't know like maybe like a few but i think i think the slate is open for business that's the best thing I I, I I agree with you except for i do think there's an outside chance that baltimore and Buffalo literally outscore every other. Like I could see. I don't think there's an outside gonna... chance at all. I think that's favored. <laughs> no, no, I know, but there's no. But, I, but I'm saying they're not. If again, if they don't get if they don't get the ownership, which as of right now it doesn't look like they are. I'm going to just hammer that that game. Well, just, where, well let's 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 talk about this for a second. So where where does the ownership go? We know where the plays are going to be, right? So those running backs are going to be chalky, right? It's like, going to be all, all these cheap cheaper ones because it's 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 DraftKings is, and and congratulations to DraftKings. They've made it hard, really, really hard to get to get players in. Um, right. And, and, and I think that's going to, that's going to dictate where you have a lot of guys in bad games that are going to be really highly owned. Like Damian Pierce is the second highest owned player on the slate or the second highest owned running back. Uh, Josh Jacobs is the fourth highest owned running back. Jamal Williams as, a, as the highest owned running back, Jonathan Taylor, who's coming, you know, as 8,800 as the next, then, then McCaffrey and, and Najee Harris. I, even though I like some of these plays, none of these guys feel like automatic to me when they're going to be 20 plus percent owned. And then you go to the receivers and Tyler Lockett being the most popular receiver with Geno Smith. I mean, Brandon Cooks being the second most popular. Now, all these plays are, again, I kind of like, but at at the highest ownership, because they kind of make your- Can I I, I give you guys a a little bit of advice? I mean, like, really, like, I, I don't know much about anything, but so I'm looking at the top two point per dollar plays, according to my projections on the slate. And, and those are, Marcus Mariota and Geno Smith. All right. If right. you, I think if you play either of these two as chalk, I really think you're doing it wrong. I, yeah. I really do. Yeah, I hear you. I'm, I'm not I'm not disagreeing with you. Um, I, I, I totally, it totally makes sense. You know, I, I totally agree with that. And uh, and by the way, Trubisky would be the third guy. <laughs> you know, and then you get into Baker Mayfield and situation. Like, you know what I mean? The third projection. But I do want to just highlight a few of the top plays that I like. Um, we're going to have to figure out what to do with the Giants receivers. That could be the value that we need that opens up the being able to play all of Baltimore and and, and uh, uh, Buffalo um, or even Jacksonville, Philly, too. I like all I like the Philly receivers. I like Diggs. I like uh, I already obviously I like Diggs. Uh, Pittman, uh, Kirk, the Deontay Johnson, both Moores, uh, DJ and uh, Rondale, if he's in. And then at, risk, at running back, my priorities will be are right now are Williams, Eckler, Pierce, Herbert, uh, Harris, Jones, McCaffrey, and Jacobs. But again, I'm going to wait to see how ownership and what happens with injuries before I make my. All right, all right. I'm going to I'm going to read I'm going to I'm going to do this uh, I'm going to explore this a little more. So Mariota and Geno Smith are fifty six hundred and fifty four hundred. Okay, so yep. let's say around fifty five hundred. I just want to read you like, and you tell me Geno Smith is going to be one of the most popular 5,500, I, I, 5,400. I just want to read you like a couple of guys. So, so, so you're telling me that when Devonte Adams gets his second touchdown pass and, 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 and Darren Waller gets his first time punch and you have Derek Carr at 5,800, you're like, Oh boy, I wish I would have saved a 400 and played Geno Smith. You know what I mean? Like, and then, I don't know. Uh, you got so Trevor Lawrence in that you got Trevor Lawrence in that Philly game. You don't think that he's going to outscore Geno Smith? I, I like. No, I'm higher on. I, I, again, I, I disagree. I like Trevor. I like Trevor Lawrence better. Um, I'm, not, I'm just saying that the, that who the, who the ownership is looking like it's slanting towards. Yeah. And it's because they're playing Detroit. It's very simple. Like, but right. I also think we can't count on the Raiders. And maybe they do it, but you, you're putting the Raiders against the team that's been the best defense in the NFL so far. And hasn't given up more than 11 points, right? Or six? No, I guess they gave up 16. They gave up yeah, right. yeah, so so the, I don't know if I want to count on the Raiders explosion, but I kind of like your idea of doing that. Um, and if you're if you're into late swapping, you can you can always pivot if you've got every if you've got the nuts everywhere else, and you could pivot onto to the heavy Green Bay stack, or you can get into the involved in a Carolina Arizona game that could be another sneaky one too. I might I might I might have the best uh, pass catcher on the slate in Devonte Adams. I might have the best pass catching tight end on the slate in in Darren Waller. It's possible, right? 
and and uh, not no the same playing. game. I don't think ever. Uh, it's unlikely. I mean, it's possible. Sure. Yeah. I, you're into it. I like it. I'm. I'm I don't want to talk you off of it. I, I'm not going to do it. But it doesn't mean that I, I'm not. I don't support you doing it. But I, I, I totally get it. Um, one other play. I just. I, I will have all the Mark Andrews this week. Uh, just yeah. You know, that's, that's, that's 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 that's. I think what you want to do. I'm yeah. using my ball tomorrow. Yeah. And 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 you know should go without saying that if you play, that if you play in GPPs and you play like Baltimore stacks, you do not have to stack. You know what I mean? Like you could can be skinny. And as a matter of fact, I think putting with two receivers is actually poor. You know what I mean? Like I yeah. think that you should play a max one receiver. The only receiver. problem is that Duvernay is, is, is so cheap; it allows you the value that you can get everything else. And he's also scored a touchdown in every game. Oh, one of them was a kick return. That's okay. He's got a chance to do that again too. It's an extra six points. He's their wide receiver too, and he's forty one hundred. Yes, so. Um, yeah, he's, te- he's technically three behind Andrews. Anyway, it should be a fun week, guys. I'll post all my uh, probably have it by tomorrow. All my core plays, uh, all my early builds, and all that stuff. So by sometime before Friday. And uh, sheets, anything else before we get out of here? No. Nope. All right. Good luck, everybody, and uh, let's kill it this week. Okay. See you later.